Welcome back guys to the Lindsay Made Designs YouTube channel. Today's project is a super cute wristlet. Is it just another wristlet? Yeah, probably. But honestly, this video is probably just as much for me as it is for you because this is fun to make. And every time I'm asked to make a wristlet, I have to go back to my notebook and see my chicken scratch notes and then I have to essentially recreate it from scratch. So finally decided to do it in pattern form and I designed it with beginners in mind. So if you're brand new to bag making, this is a good one to start with. If you're not a wristlet person like me, I don't use wristlets. I'm more prone to just setting it down and forgetting it. I need to be hands-free. You can use this as a clutch, you can use it as a zippy pouch to throw in another bag, or you can add a body strap to these back D-rings. By doing it this way, it does make it domestic machine friendly and it allows the wearer to choose which side they want their wristlet strap to hang, but then gives you that option of wearing it as a crossbody, which is my preference. So inside, when you open it up, you have a zip pocket along one side and on the other side, you have four credit card slots and a cash slip pocket. So I have a wristlet here to show you how it easily converts from pouch or clutch straight to a wristlet. There we go. And now we just have a chain. I love a petite bag like this to use a chain because it's not gonna get really, really heavy on your shoulder and it just looks so chic, I feel, with something this size. So just add your crossbody strap Boom, super cute. But that's not all guys. You don't have to just hear a pattern that's a wristlet and think, well, that's it, I don't need a wristlet. It's got options. If Depending on the hardware you choose for these D-rings, you can slide your chain through and clip it back on itself and make a cute little waist bag. Now let's talk materials for this little pouch. I prefer vinyl, cork, or leather for the entire exterior. And let me tell you why. I just feel like a wristlet, it's banging against your body. It's being set down on surfaces a ton. It's going in and out of a bag. It's gonna show a lot of wear and tear when it's fabric. And it's gonna look dingy over time unless someone's really delicate with it and carefully where they're careful with where they place it. So if you can, I would encourage you to use vinyl cork or leather for the exterior pieces and then save the quilt cotton for the interior. Um, I did write it so it is very domestic machine friendly even if it is your first time with vinyl cork or leather. I actually just did a recent video showing the differences and how to choose the right vinyl cork or leather for your project. If you want to check that out, I'll go ahead and link it in the description below, but that'll get you started if you're brand new to either any of those materials and you just don't know where to start. For the D-ring anchor portion, um, your choice for size of hardware, it's really up to you. I, I write the pattern for half inch swivel clasp and three quarters inch D-rings, but if you wanna go bigger on the swivel clasp or smaller on the D-rings, that's entirely up to you. This is a two-fold method, so you're just gonna take double the width of your D-ring and make this back panel. And I would encourage you to choose a more slimmer profile D-ring over going larger or more chunky, because we kinda want them to be inconspicuous. If this is a pouch mode, we don't want our big old D-rings hanging out the side. We wanna be able to tuck them in so it does look just like a pouch. So choice of D-rings, it's important. Stay petite over chunky. And then I would encourage you to go smaller over a larger size D-ring. And I do show you how to do vinyl cork or leather wristlet strap as well as a four-fold fabric strap. So we have options, guys. So let's discuss the pattern pieces to start. So for today's video, I'm gonna be using a vinyl for the exterior pieces and wristlet strap, although I did cut additional pieces to show you how to do a fabric wristlet. And then the interior is gonna be all quilt cotton that I did interface. Now, I wanna bring your attention to the card slot piece here. So I did not take the interfacing all the way to the edges because we are gonna form the card slots fan folding and this side edge can end up being pretty bulky. So according to the pattern piece, you're gonna cut your interfacing uh, shorter than to the full edges. All the other pieces, I did go ahead and take the interfacing all the way to the edges. Now, because I'm using vinyl for my main exterior pieces here, I did not add any interfacing. Um, this has enough uh, structure that 
I, it doesn't need anything additional. But if this were quilt cotton or even a lightweight canvas, I would fuse the um, a woven interfacing around the whole thing and then I would take the pattern piece and you'll see that there's a line that indicates where you would wanna cut fusible fleece so it stays out of your seam allowance. The other piece I wanna talk about for interfacing is the wristlet strap. So this is quilt cotton. I did interface it with a medium weight woven interfacing but I stopped short on the edges because when we sew those together, we wanna to reduce the bulk for the joining seam. So those are the, the main things to note. The interfacing adjustment for your card slots, the interfacings needed for your main body, and the wristlet strap. When I make this pattern, I often will just cut one material for the whole lining piece and then one for the exterior, but I did choose to write it and for this demonstration show it like each piece is a different color so that we can try and help keep each piece clear in our minds because there's a lot of similarly shaped rectangles and it can get very confusing. So before I jump in, I will kind of organize them in piles. So this is the card slot slip pocket section and then this is the interior zipper pocket and then the exterior piece. I personally love to get my straps out of the way for any project I'm working on. So we're gonna jump right into making the wristlet strap. I do have two pieces here. Like I mentioned before, this is the um, quilt cotton version. So this is gonna be a four fold, no raw edge strap. And then I did cut a piece of vinyl so I can show you the alternate way to make the wristlet strap where we're folding the long edges to the center. So let's start with the quilting cotton and then I will show you alternate ways to make a wristlet strap using vinyl or even leather and making it super simple. So to start, I've drawn a line down the center of the length on the back side of my materials and I'm gonna fold these long edges to that line and press with my iron. So I've just folded the long edges to the center and now I've encased these long edges with another fold. So this is the four fold strap but I need to sew these short edges together. So before I do that, I need to go ahead and grab my swivel clasp and thread it on. And I've got it clipped more to just hold the folds that I've created with the iron, but we're gonna have to open these up along the edges and line up those short edges. Like this. I'm gonna clip that in place. And we're gonna sew this short edge using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. All right, so right sides are together, and now I'm gonna go ahead and press that seam open. And refold it. Just like that. So now I'm gonna sew along each folded edge, an eighth inch from each side, and then I'm just gonna remove my clips as I come upon them and move my swivel clasp out of the way as I continue to sew in the round. I always start with the open side first, sew that in place, and then move over to the other long um, folded edge. So now I can either turn my strap the opposite way to get my swivel clasp on the right end, or you're just gonna slide your, your swivel clasp if you have like a directional print. But being a four-fold fabric, that shouldn't really be an issue. So here's the seam, it's kind of hard to see, but I'm gonna go ahead and sew right in the, the ditch of that seam to secure my swivel clasp in place. So I've just slid the seam about a half inch above it. I'll pinch it together and sew right across there. Alternatively, if you'd prefer to use a rivet, you can punch your hole in between the seam and your swivel clasp right here and set it with your press or hand tools. I would not punch 
right through the seam because you'll weaken your strap over time and it can fall apart. Let's move on to the vinyl strap. Um, usually vinyl is a little bit too thick to do a fourfold, so I do construct it a little bit differently. So here's for the vinyl strap. This is the correct side along the back side, fabric flat side. I did draw a center line, the length of it, and I'm gonna take some quarter inch double-sided tape and lay it down right on top of that center line, straddling it. This will allow me to fold those long edges to the center line and give us a clean edge along both sides. Now, I'm not a fan of just folding it like perfectly in half and having one side completely raw and one side folded. I don't think it gives you the best look. So my preferred method is to go ahead and pinch it into the center line, just like so, along both sides. When it comes to straps, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to cut them with a straight edge ruler and a rotary cutter to get a nice clean line versus a potential jagged cut with scissors because we really want these long edges to meet right in the middle and have that seam be almost invisible. So now I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew just lateral to that seam going up one side and back down the other. Now you will be running through the double-sided tape. So if that's an issue, you may want to hold these long edges with clips, or if your machine can handle it, um, again, you will be sewing through the tape. So I did sew a strap off camera showing you what it would look like. So this is the front side and this is the back side. So the seam would be along the inside of your strap, just like that. But if you are worried about sewing through double-sided tape, you could always take half inch um, webbing and you can lay it down the center of your strap just like this and it will cover the seam and then you can sew just an eighth from those folded edge so you're completely uh, avoiding the double-sided tape and it adds like a cute little element to your wristlet strap. So I'm gonna do that right now and show you um, how that works. We want one end butted up against the short edge of the strap and we're gonna leave about a one inch gap along this edge. This is gonna be the part that wraps around our swivel clasp. To make my life easier, I did add some 1 8 inch double-sided tape along the center just to kind of hold my webbing in place so it doesn't shift. Okay, so again, we're cutting this about an inch shorter than we're cutting our vinyl. Now, just like our fourfold wristlet, you can um, sew it in place, but I have uh, my hand press and some a punching mat and a tool so I can set a rivet. So you're going to take your swivel clasp and you're going to thread it to the end of the webbing here, and then you're going to loop this top end over, butting up those edges, and then fold this side over like this. So now, um, right in this little hole here, I'm going to punch with my hole punch and hammer here, and then set my rivet. Last but not least, if you want to hit that super easy button, they do sell pre-cut straps. So this is a veg tan cut half inch wide and you just thread on your swivel clasp just the same way we do like a normal um, vinyl strap and you rivet it. Super simple, beautiful. Next, grab the smaller of the two zippers. Make sure you've added your pole if you're using zipper by the yard and um, separate poles and grab the two side zipper tabs. So with the zipper face up in front of you, you're gonna take each tab and lay it face down on top and clip each end in place. Now, if you're brand new and sewing accurate seam allowances is really tough for you, I would highly encourage you to draw your seam allowances every step of the way so that you can be very accurate and um, you won't have any issues with measurements in the end. So as you can see, I drew my seam allowance so that I can also be accurate. Now as I explained in the beginning I am using vinyl and I've written for this in the instructions to show how you're going to modify for vinyl versus fabric. But because this is vinyl and a little bit more thick what we're doing right now is we're folding it back over our stitch line and then we're going to wrap it under. For fabric you're folding it in half like this for this double fold and then 
top stitching here. But for vinyl, because it doesn't fray and it's also thick, we're going to tuck it, butt it up right against our edge of our zipper, and we're only going to do that single fold and top stitch. And then I'm just going to trim this down to reduce bulk. All right, so now I'm just going to flip it to the back side and go ahead and trim off this excess very carefully right up against my stitch line on both sides. Now, a really important point here is that when I added my zipper tabs, I did not add any length to my zipper. It's tightly wrapped around the edge of the zipper, so it should be the same size as when you started. Do not add length here or it will be difficult to install at the end. Now go ahead and fold short end to short end and mark the centers of your zipper. You can mark it with a pin or itty bitty snip like I'm doing here. Alrighty, set it aside. Now we're going to make the back D-ring anchor. So I am using vinyl for that piece, so these little stabilizer pieces aren't entirely necessary, but I would like to show you how to do it, especially if this is straight quilting cotton or any lightweight material. So on the back side, you would have fused your medium weight woven interfacing. We've drawn the center line down here, and then you're going to measure in and mark along each side as the pattern uh, instructs. So then you're going to take these little stabilizer pieces and you're going to butt it up to that line, straddling the center line here, and we're going to fuse these in place. This is going to just stabilize this area a little bit extra because that's where um, a lot of the weight of the bag is where your strap's going to connect. Now that the stabilizer has been fused in place, I'm going to take a quarter inch double sided tape and I'm going to run it along that center line just like we did for our wristlet strap. And we're going to fold the long edges to the line. And now because I can't quite see that initial vertical line, I'm going to go ahead and re-add it so that I can, so I know where I'm going to be stitching. So I can see my stabilizer just under there. I'm going to draw a line on the wrong side of my material so I could see that line still. Still on the wrong side of this D-ring anchor piece, I'm going to sew these little boxes on the end. So starting on the short raw edge, we're going to go an eighth inch from the folded edge down across that line and back off this side and repeat on that side. For the next step, you're going to grab the back, your main body back. So you have to determine if you've got a feature fabric or if they're both the same, determine which one's going to be front and back. I think I like this one for the front. So I'm going to set that off to the side and we're going to be working with the back. So we're going to take the uh, D-ring anchor that we just created. We're going to measure an inch from the top edge. And I'm going to add some double-sided tape, again, because I am working with vinyl. You can always use pins if you prefer, but I'm going to lay this double-sided tape right in between the stitch lines here. And then I'm going to center it on this back main body piece an inch from the top edge. So just butt it up just like that and press into the adhesive to hold it in place. So now we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to start at the bottom of the vertical stitching here. We're going to go up over that across, down over this stitching, and back here. And I tend to like my leave my thread tails long so I can pull them to the back and tie them off so there's not a, a bulky back stitch at the beginning or the end. I just dropped my needle into the um, corner there 
I'm gonna hold on to my threads, tails, leaving them long. I'm not gonna back stitch. I'm just gonna write over my previous stitching and then end right in the corner here and then go along this edge. Before I get to the edge here, I'm going to go ahead and just give it a gentle tug so I can form this loop, pull the thread tail to the back, and then finish at that corner. Still leaving my thread tails fairly long so I can pull it to the back again and tie them off. Now that this is anchored down and this is not sewn down, we're going to go ahead and take a D-ring and thread it through and clip that edge. And repeat with this side and clip. So now I want to sew this down so that the D-rings are secure inside this little channel. But what I tend to do is I'll sew as close to the edge as possible, so an eighth inch away, backstitch here and then I, I back stitch on an angle to, and then back down and I form a little end. So I'll show you what I mean by that right now, just to make this area um, reinforce so that it doesn't pull out over time. So with my needle down, I just kind of angle it that way and then I'm gonna go back. And I'm only going about a quarter inch out because I want these stitches to remain within the seam allowance, which is 3 8 inch. So. It's pretty narrow. Just like that, a little N, and I'm going to repeat it with the other side. All right, now that that is tacked in place, we can go ahead and sew the darts on the front and the back. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your material and fold it so that right sides are facing and clip these in place. Now you're going to go ahead and sew using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. You're going to do this for all four corners. Okay, I've sewn all four darts. Now we're not going to trim these ones down. What we're going to do is we're going to take some sharp scissors and snip into the dart up to our stitch line but not through it. And then I'm going to go ahead and take some double sided tape and press that seam open. You can use glue, you can use clips, you can use whatever you want. I'm just a big fan of double sided tape. Just like that. Now do that to the three remaining darts. Before moving on to the interior portion, now would be the, an excellent time to add your maker's mark if you're going to do that to the exterior. So after you've sewn your darts, you can see how your bag's gonna lay. So this is gonna be tucked to the bottom. So really any point after that is fine to put your handmade label. You could do it on the bottom, the top, the corner, wherever you like. But keep in mind, we still have to install our zipper, so you wanna give yourself at least an inch and a quarter from the top if you're gonna do it on your front or your back. I wouldn't really put it above this. I would probably stick below if you're going to put it on the back. So this has two layers of stitching on each side of these and then this is reinforced here. So this next step where you can add a rivet next to it is completely optional. So if you're brand new to bag making and you don't have any of these extra gadgets, feel free to totally skip this step. I just like to add the reinforcement there and then I really just love the look of rivets. So about a quarter inch to the left of the stitching line here and a quarter inch to the right of this one, we're gonna go ahead and punch a hole and add a rivet optionally. Now that the exterior of our bag is complete, go ahead and set all those aside and grab your card slot piece as well as your pattern. If your fabric is um, directional, make sure we're working with the top, uh, up top and the bottom below. So you're gonna flip it to the back side. So from the top edge, we're gonna measure down four inches and draw a line. Draw it straight across. And then you're gonna take the uh, last stabilizer piece and you're gonna fuse it right at that line with half inch gaps on each side. Now that that's fused, go ahead and flip it back right side up. And we're gonna take our pattern piece and line it up 
um, with that top edge and we're going to transfer our markings along the side here. So you'll see there's fold lines and then there's top of edge pocket lines going down the side. So I'm going to use two different marking colors to keep it straight. So my fold lines, I'm going to do black. And the top of the edge pocket I'm going to do in silver. We're not going across the whole fabric, we're just marking the sides here. So then I'm going to slide my pattern piece over and do the same thing here. It's probably kind of tough to see these colors, but as long as I can see them, right? All right, now we're going to go over to the iron and we're going to create our card slot. And it's important to keep oriented because we just added our markings and our fusible stabilizers on the back side. So go ahead and flip this over and fold this top edge right at that stabilizer and press with your iron. This should align with the first markings we did on the front. Right there and right there. All right. So now we have, these are the top of our card slot markings. I understand it's probably difficult to see, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab, I'm gonna skip the second mark and go to the third, which is these black lines right here. I'm gonna pinch them with my fingers like this. And then I'm gonna lay it right down on top of that first or the second marking from the top. So this is a 3 4 inch gap. We're going to go ahead and press it with our iron. And then we're going to grab the last marking, these two black marks right here, pinch it with our fingers, and lay it right down on our silver marks. So it really should line up perfectly with the bottom. And you should have, um, this would be 4 inches high. Now before we go ahead and separate these pockets with the top stitch and everything, I want to go ahead and double check my card slots that they fit right, that we've done our fan folding correctly. I've just added some clips to kind of help hold the fan folds in place. I've double checked with my cards, everything looks good. I didn't lose one down hidden in the pocket and one's not sticking up, so we know that we did it correctly. So now we're going to have to create those pockets by just sewing the folded pieces. We don't want to sew them down onto each other or we'll close our pockets. So we have to just kind of tuck it out of the way each time as we top stitch these folded edges. So for the first top edge, I don't have to move anything out of the way. So I just leave everything clipped as is. And I'm going to sew an eighth inch from that folded edge. Now, I'll just unclip that top one and then fold this back so it's out of the way and then sew this edge. Then I'll put it back down and move my clip up top to hold those, that fold in the place. And then I'm gonna go ahead and fold that out of the way so I can sew the last pocket here. All right, so then I can let it fall back into place and then go ahead and clip all those layers together here. So we've got that. Now we're gonna go ahead and find the center of the pockets and mark a line so we can create the two sets of card slots. So I just took some chalk and drew a center line and I stopped at the top of this middle pocket. We're not gonna go all the way to the top edge. But before we go ahead and sew this, we do need to pull that back folded edge out of the way. So I'm holding my folds with my hand and I'm removing the clips and I'm going to tuck this so it's not underneath, so it's pulled out of the way. So starting along the bottom, 
well, being my card slots did not ship, shift in any way, we're going to go ahead and sew up this line, keeping our needle down. We're going to pivot and go back down over our previous stitching. So as soon as I'm in line with my stitching, my needle's in the down position, I pivot and I'm going to go back right down over that stitching. All right, now you can pull your backside back in place and then let's go ahead and just tack these three edges so that all the layers are together. Here we are. All the, the three edges are tacked in place so it's now one piece. Now let's go gather the other pieces to complete the one side of the interior lining. We have the slip pocket, we have the bottom accent, and then we have two side accents here. I've already gone ahead and drawn my seam allowances so that I can be really accurate with this next step. Now these card slots are, there's enough room to fit your cards in easily, but if you are not accurate with your seam allowance and you take, you know, additional or maybe a half inch seam allowance, you're going to make your, your card slots super tight and difficult to get cards in and out of. So this, these side accent pieces are pretty important to make sure you are accurate with your, your seam allowance. So now take the slip pocket piece and your card slots and line up these bottom edges, just like that. So they're both right sides facing up and then take your bottom accent and with the seam I've already drawn, I'm going to put that along the bottom. I'm going to sandwich this. So right sides facing and we're going to clip along this bottom edge so that all edges are aligned and we're going to sew this at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So now we're going to go ahead and finger press this bottom accent away from our card slots and we're going to top stitch on the bottom accent an eighth inch from that seam. There we go. Now we're going to add our side accent pieces. Just taking the car, the side accents and I've clipped them right sides facing with the seam allowance that I've already drawn um, along the right edges here. So now I'm going to go ahead and, and sew this, press it open and top stitch just like we did with the bottom accent. added the side accents, let's go ahead and double check that our cards, lit, our cards fit well because you really don't want to get to the end of your, your wristlet make and realize you did it too tight. Okay, so they fit good. We can breathe easier. Now we want to go ahead and trim off this top edge if it's a little uneven. So measure from here and um, keep that gap nice and even and trim it off and then we'll mark our center of the top. I just lined up my ruler and it was a perfect, it should be a one inch gap along here and then straighten that edge. So now we're going to go ahead and fold this in half, lining up those side seams and mark the center. Not quite looking like a liner piece like our exterior so far, but we'll do that with once we create the zipper pocket. So set this aside and go ahead and grab all your materials for the zipper pocket. Gather the pieces I'm going to need for this step. I have the zipper pocket liner the last two side accents, the zipper top, zipper bottom, and then the remaining zipper. And then I want to add a label. I think it would be really cute in there. I'll probably forget, but I've got it just in case I remember. Now, I personally find installing the zipper easiest without my pull on, but we do cut the zipper a generous length so that you can move it kind of all the way to the end and have it out of the way so you can sew it. But um, I'm going to go ahead and remove my pull. Again, I find it easiest and then in the, in the written instructions I show you with the pull moved out to 
the side. So I'll show you how I do it this way. I just set the other pieces aside because I'm not gonna be working with those right now. But if you are new to installing zippers, eighth inch double-sided tape is really your best friend here because a lot of times people have the biggest issue with their zipper installs being wavy. And it's because the zipper kind of shifts out of place while you're um, sewing it in, in place. So if you can use the eighth inch double-sided tape to just keep everything in place, you're gonna be a lot happier with your zipper install result. Plus being eighth inch, it does stay out of our seam allowance. So we're gonna take our zipper tape and we're gonna face it um, right sides facing together, kind of center it on that and line up those edges and press that in place. So I just like doing it this way because my zipper pull isn't in the way where I have to sew, stop, move it out of the way. But um, it's perfectly fine if you wanna leave it on and pull it all the way off to the side. So now that that's in place, I'll go ahead and add another layer of the double-sided tape in the same spot. So again, we are still out of our seam allowance. Peel off that backing. And I'm gonna take the zipper pocket liner. Now it almost looks the same, but it is shorter going width-wise than it is lengthwise. So go ahead and line it up face down, creating a zipper sandwich, lining up those side edges and this top edge and press. So now you can see that the edge is all perfectly aligned. So when I go to sew, then they're not gonna shift out of place on me and I'm gonna have a nice straight zipper install. So go to the sewing machine and sew a quarter inch seam allowance. So far we've been doing that 3 8 inch seam allowance, but for our zipper installs, we're gonna do quarter inch. And I prefer that one because I know my edge of my foot is a quarter inch. So it's, it's easy enough for me and I don't have to swap out my foot. Kind of a laziness thing, honestly. So go ahead and just finger press the zipper bottom away and the lining away from the zipper. And now we're just gonna top stitch an eighth inch from the seam. Now, as I'm top stitching, I'm giving pressure to the zipper with my, my fingers. I'm kind of pulling on the teeth so the, and pulling this way so I can keep all of it pulled nice and taut away from the zipper so it doesn't bubble into my seam or into my zipper tape and then get caught when you open and close your zipper. I'm pulling with my fingers. One's going this way and I'm pulling on the teeth going this way. And because we're staying an eighth inch away, you should still be out of your double-sided tape. I've already added double-sided tape to the front and the back of the zipper tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the one from the back side, the adhesive backing. And then we're gonna take the zipper pocket and loop it right sides facing and press it right into that adhesive along this top edge here. And we're gonna flip it back over to the right side remove the backing off of this piece of adhesive and take the zipper top and lay it right sides facing on top. So here's another zipper sandwich we like to call it. Now being very careful to align all of those edges. So now we're gonna go ahead and sew another quarter inch seam allowance, press this up away and top stitch. If you installed your zipper without the pull, go ahead and add that now before we move on to the next steps. So I have some excess zipper tape here, so I'm going to trim it so it is flush with the edge of my panel here. I grabbed my two side accent pieces and my label. So I wouldn't recommend you put your label on this side if your zipper pull is going left to right. That is my preference, so I fed the pull on from the right side so that it hangs on the left side. But if you put your label here, your pull will cover it. So I would go ahead and add it to the opposite side. And you can either base, base that in place first before you sew on your side accent so it doesn't shift or um, just say a small prayer and hope that it goes without a hitch. So go ahead and center these side panels on this main, main piece here because you'll see it is a little bit shorter, but we're gonna be trimming it all down in the end. So go ahead and clip these in place, center it on the edge, 
And just like with our other piece, we're going to go ahead and sew um, the 3 8 inch seam allowance, press open, and top stitch. I'm going to go ahead and clean up this top edge so it's flush with the side accent pieces and then we're going to mark our center. Now we need our interior liners to look like our pattern piece. So you'll notice there's a red dash line on the top. It says fold at dash line when cutting main body liners. So we're going to go ahead and fold that to the back. We're going to take that center mark and line it up with the center markings we cut along the top of each of our panels here. I'm going to clip that in place along this edge. Just like that. So you'll see that we made the panels oversized, so we got to trim them down to size. So now we're going to go ahead and trace around our pattern piece here and then cut it down to size. We're going to repeat that with the card slot piece as well. Now that we have them the correct shape, we're going to go ahead and sew the darts just like we did on our main body piece by folding right sides together, clipping, sewing 3 8 inch. But instead of clipping up to the top of the seam and spreading it open, we're going to go ahead and trim them down to an eighth inch seam allowance. Before we go ahead and put it all together, we're on the tail end of things here, we do need to mark our turning hole along the backside of a lining piece. So from the dart, I'm just measuring in a half inch and I'm marking this. Doing it on the other side as well and I'm marking. So when we go to sew the perimeter, we're going to start at these markings and stop at the other marking and this will be left open so we can turn our bag right side out. Let's put the bag together. We're at the tail end guys. So what I've already done off camera is I did add a layer of the double sided 1 8 inch tape along the top edges of all my pieces. I grabbed the remaining zipper here and you can use the, this eighth inch double sided tape if you're brand new. I highly encourage you to add that to your practice because it keeps things from shifting like I mentioned with the interior zipper. But if you don't have that, the double sided tape, what you're going to do is you're going to baste your zipper in place before we add our layers so that things do not shift out of place. So I'm going to put the exterior back off to the side and I'm going to be working with the front and the main zipper right here. I'm going to go ahead and peel off the uh, backing from the adhesive here. I like my zipper pull to the left, so I'm going to orient it that way. I want my bolt bag to open from left to right, but if you have your own personal preference, it's not right or wrong either way. Go ahead and orient your zipper how you'd like. I'm going to lay my zipper face down, lining up the centers, and you should have some pretty generous gaps along each edge where the zipper tab ends and where the back the front body ends and we're going to press it into the adhesive just like that. Now I prefer to have my card slops on the front wall because when I'm looking into the bag I'm used to seeing the zipper on the back wall but this is a personal preference step as well. So when your, bo when your bag is on your body and you like set it up on the counter I want to be able to see my card slots so that's why when it's on me like this my card slots are going to be here. So I'm going to grab that piece and have it be the back side of the front portion of our bag. I'm going to peel off that backing and we're going to go ahead and center it. I like to line up those edges first and then the center and press it in place. So again, make sure that all these edges are nice and aligned before we go and stitch them so this will help prevent you having a wavy zipper. Now we're going to go to the sewing machine and sew it using a quarter inch seam allowance. I do have some bulky areas here with the zipper tabs on my domestic machine. So if you want to take it extra cautious and hand crank over those areas um, versus jamming your needle and snapping it, I would encourage you to do that. So I'm coming up to that bulky area. I'm just going to hand crank right over that because I just don't know if my machine is going to get upset using vinyl. Once I've passed that, then I'm going to keep sewing. 
but I'm feeling for my zipper pull. It's over here, so I have a ways to go, but once I get there, I wanna stop with my needle down, move the zipper out of the way, and finish my stitch. So this focus right now is maintaining an accurate seam allowance. So find a guide on your foot or use an edge guide or draw your seam allowance, but you want it to stay real even. You don't wanna end up wavy seam allowance or your zipper will be wavy. Coming up to my, seam, my zipper pull, so I'm gonna leave my needle down, reach inside, find that zipper pull, lift up my foot and move it out of the way. I'm also coming up to the extra, the second um, zipper tab, so I'm just gonna hang crank over that so I don't upset my machine here and finish. So now's the time you wanna go back and make sure your stitch looks pretty uniform across. Otherwise, even it out or seam rip and redo it so that um, we have the nicest zipper installed possible. Unlike the interior zipper, we're gonna press our exterior away from the zipper. We're gonna finger press that really well, but we're not gonna push the lining under that and, as well and go through all layers. This is gonna help when we go to um, sew the perimeter. We don't want these areas sewn together or we won't be able to sew it nicely around that side. So just finger pressing it well away from the zipper, and then I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch. Going over that zipper tab, go a little slow. Now I'm tugging on mine a little bit because I didn't swap out to a Teflon foot. If you're sewing with vinyl, you really should put on a Teflon foot, but mine's a zipper foot and I just didn't want to do it, but I'm kind of paying the price for it now because it is catching. This normal foot is dragging on my vinyl and I'm having to struggle with it. So if you have a walking foot or a Teflon foot, definitely put that on so you can save yourself the hassle if you're using vinyl. Go ahead and finger press the lining back behind the main body here so it's nice and straight there and now we're going to go ahead and add the back piece to the zipper so i'm going to lay that in front right side up in front of me and i'm going to flip this over and center the zipper on top of this lining up these edges with the edge of the back here and press the tape into into the the zipper tape into my double-sided tape so that edge is nice and aligned and will prevent my zipper from shifting. So now I'm going to take the lining piece and repeat that face down. So I'm looking at the wrong side of the zipper for this side and right sides are facing. Line up those edges. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance and then I'm going to press the exterior away, leaving the liner out of the way to top stitch and then I will switch out to a Teflon foot and make my life easier. Stitching from this side is not a problem because this is like a fabric backing. My foot doesn't stick. But when I go to do that top stitch, I noticed it with my D-ring anchor as well. I should have swapped out to my Teflon foot. But honestly, I'm, su I'm always used to using my industrial walking foot for bag making that I don't even usually sew with vinyl on a domestic but this vinyl is domestic machine friendly so I wanted to show that and this pattern is domestic machine friendly so I was thought it was important to show you guys that it is being made on a domestic machine coming up to the zipper tab which is a bulky area I'm just hand cranking it Finger press this away and top stitch, but I'm gonna go ahead and swap out to a Teflon. Just foot. like with the front side, my lining is pulled away from the um, exterior here, so I'm only gonna be sewing through just this one layer from the top. I did swap out to a Teflon foot. Um, the only Teflon foot I have for this machine is a zipper foot, so it's not my preference to top stitch with my zipper foot because I feel like um, it doesn't do as great a job. But like I said, if you're if you've been around my channel a while, you know my main machine is an industrial walking foot for bag making, but this is 
domestic friendly vinyl and a domestic friendly pattern. So I wanted to show you that you could do it on a domestic. And as you can see, I'm not fighting with my machine now because the Teflon is helping it glide. Move my D-ring out of the way. Yeah, much better, even stitches, I'm not fighting my machine. All right, so go ahead and finger press that lining away from your zipper and we're gonna sew up the perimeter and we'll be done. That seems so pretty. All right, so main thing, we have to open our main zipper because we're gonna turn our bag that way, but mine's a pretty dangly pull, so I'm probably not gonna do it all the way. I don't wanna get it potentially in my seam allowance. And also wanna make sure that I'm tucking my D-rings out of that side area so that I don't catch that in my seam. So what we're gonna do is now we're gonna fold the exteriors together and the linings together. So, but I like to take my, um, the tab, the zipper tab, and I wanna pinch it in half. The pinched portion goes towards the lining. And usually I'll add like an itty bitty piece of double-sided tape right at this junction because when you sew up the sides, you don't want it to shift out of place. You want these seams to line up perfectly. So I will put clips in this, but I also put that double-sided tape to kind of ensure that it does not shift out of place. So I'm gonna clip that there. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm just gonna add a skinny piece of double-sided tape that's gonna be well out of my seam allowance. Oops, stuck to my skin. Just like that. Okay, pinch this going towards the lining and line that perfectly. So if we had top stitched through our lining, we wouldn't have this nice, this would be buckled back on itself and it makes it very difficult to sew this perimeter nicely. So then I'm gonna go ahead and clip the darts in place here. Line those up and I just lay one going one direction and the other one going in the opposite direction. Just tuck it inside each other, lay them opposite directions. Same thing. Down here. Tuck it. Clip. Then I'm going to go ahead and just clip the remainder in place. Then when we go to our sewing machine, we're going to have to start with our hole markings side up so we can see where we are starting and stopping. is right here. So we're going to start, go up and sew a 3 8 inch seam allowance all the way around and end back I'm here. I'm keeping this foot on my machine or I usually suggest that if you don't have a zipper foot you want to do a, the narrowest foot that it will allow you to get your needle as close to the zipper tab so you can get your full 3 8 inch seam allowance but not catch the zipper tab in your stitching. So if you can adjust your needle to the left position or swap out your foot, that is what I'm recommending for this, this portion. So I'm gonna keep my zipper foot in place and I'm gonna start at this bottom here. And we're going up 3 8 inch and pivot. Now, when I come over these darts, I'm gonna backstitch multiple times because we are going to trim the, these down and I don't want my dart seam to unravel. So make sure you backstitch over all four darts. So I'm coming up to my zipper tab. I can feel it, it's very bulky in there, but maintaining my 3 8 inch seam allowance, I should not hit it. Just hand cranking, because this is quite a few layers with the folded seam allowance there. And then um, I'm, I can feel my D-ring anchor under here. So I wanna make sure my D-ring is pushed over. I can feel the outline so it's that way. I don't wanna catch it with my needle. Back stitch over the start.
back stitching again. Here's my D-ring anchor I feel again, and my D-ring is pushed over out of the way. My zipper tab you can see is over here, so we're not catching it in our seam. We've got enough wiggle room. Back stitch over that dart. And then we're coming up to our turning hole. So I'm going to drop my needle down, pivot, and sew right off the edge. All right, now we're going to go ahead and trim our seam allowance down, but we're going to avoid the D-ring anchor. So don't trim anything right here because we don't want to cut off our reinforcement stitches. I just took some pinking shears and I trimmed all the way around, but I want to show you right where we came in for our stitching here. I'm going to snip right up to that line there. Okay, and then we did not trim right here where our D-ring anchor is, so do the best that you can. We did put a piece of tape there, but to press this open with your fingers, so when we go to turn it right side out, this area is pressed. Okay. Press. So now we have to go in through the hole we left, and we left our interior zipper open. So now we're going to pull it right side out. Since this is vinyl, I'm going to go ahead and take my hair dryer and insert the nozzle in here and blast it with heat. So it makes this extra soft to turn, and then um, flip it right side out. I've done the bulk of the turning right side out. I'm trying to push out my corners here as well as here. And now you can see my um, zipper tabs are tucked in there. So I'm going to go ahead and put my lining inside so I can get those zipper tabs pulled out nicely. Just kind of tuck it the best you can in place. And now I'd like to take a screwdriver and I'm going just under here. So I'm not going on the other side of the lining. I'm going right here. And I'm going to take the flathead screwdriver and I'm just going to pop it up. So there is a hole there because remember we didn't have our zipper tab in our seam. So that's expected. And then I'm going to push the rest of it out with my finger so we have a nice corner up here. Okay. I'm going to do that with this other side as well. So I'm going just under here, use the flat portion of my screwdriver, pop it up. Okay. So continue to finger press everything well where it needs to be, and then we're going to pull out our lining again so we can close our hole. All right, so now I'm just going to tuck this in, aligning with where we ended our previous stitching. Use your fingers to naturally get it to curve where it wants to go. Clip in place. Now I do have to swap out my foot again so that I can close this. But we're just going to sew from where we are half inch from the side. Sew here all the way there. Close it and stuff your lining back in your bag and you'll be done. to get as close to the edge without falling off and not catching the back side as I can. Back stitch well at the beginning and the end. Did I catch it? Yay! Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and tuck the lining in. Now you want to use your, your thumbs and your fingers to really seat that corner well into the corner of the exterior. So push it right, make sure it's in there, and then I'll go inside here and I really like spread open the seam here and tuck it deep into the corner because I want everything to sit nicely inside here. Same thing. Spread it kind of with your thumbs 
push it open, make sure this is seated really well on the bottom. There we go. Got our wristlet strap and we are done. So pretty. You got your card slots and slip pocket, your zipper pocket. Now with the two D rings on both sides, the wearer can choose what side they want to add their wristlet strap to. Or my personal preference is adding a fun chain because this is such a dainty little bag. A chain is perfect for something like this because it's not gonna be really, really heavy on your shoulder. Ah, I love it.